Hi guys, it's John here with the NED Training Center, back with another short grammar lesson. Today we're going to be talking about the future. Now, a lot of English learners find the future a bit confusing to learn, not because it has very strict rules, but because of the opposite. The future can be confusing because we don't have a specific future tense in English, and we can use a lot of different tenses and constructs depending what we're talking about, the function of our language. Timetables. When we read a timetable and we like to know when the movie is on, when the train leaves, or when the uh, plane arrives at the airport. These are all important to us. They're things which happen regularly or on a timetable or a schedule, okay? And in English, for this, we use the present simple tense. It's the only time we use the present simple to describe the future, okay? It's important to know that it's not just for scheduled events in the near future, happening today, tomorrow, next week, okay, the movie starts at 5 p.m., but also for things that happen much further in the future. The key thing is they're on a regular schedule or timetable. So Christmas happens in December, the World Cup uh, happens every four years. The second special uh, functional area where we talk about the future is about offers and the inverse of an offer, requests, okay? For this, we use will plus the infinitive without to. An example of that might be I'll or I will, contracted, I'll buy you a pint. That's an offer, so I use will. This is a request, will you buy me a pint? So we also use will, okay? Other books and grammar texts will tell you you need to focus on when you make the decision or what, your, what time you're thinking about making the offer. For me, that's not so important. The key thing is, it is an offer or a request. So for example, I'll buy you a pint uh, tonight, but when you're 65, I'll marry you, okay? It's still an offer. It's for much further in the future. The important thing is, it's an offer. I'm using will. Let's have a look at the third special functional area where we use, uh, um, talk about the future in English. Promises and their inverse, threats. Okay, again, we use will plus the infinitive without to. Okay, an example of this, I'll never cheat on you, baby. We've all heard those words once in a while. And maybe we said these other ones as well. A threat, I'll kill you if you cheat on me. Okay, again, we're promising or we're threatening, so we're using will. Come back next time when we'll talk about the, the rest of what we need to talk about in the future in English.